In this video, I'm going to be talking about defeaturing, and in particular, how to remove something like a discontinuity or a step in between some adjacent surfaces. So here you can see I've got a couple of surfaces with a step highlighted in gray here, and ultimately I would like to remove that from the geometry. Now if I go ahead and mesh this as is, take this model and just go ahead and mesh this, and we'll make it unstructured, and I'll just turn off the view of the geometry so it's a little easier to see you can see that I've effectively picked a cell size that's roughly the same size as that surface, that same geometry. So I'm, I'm basically resolving that geometry. I'm, re I'm kind of resolving that step with some cells. Now, if I'm using cells of this size or smaller, I probably shouldn't remove that geometry, all right? And that's a good rule of thumb. If you're gonna be using a uh, surface cell spacing that's smaller than a feature, that feature should probably stay in the geometry. If you're using a cell size larger than that feature, then you could probably go ahead and remove it. And I'll demonstrate why that is. So if I go ahead and just delete this domain and then delete this connector as well and go to grid merge and replace this connector with this connector, you can see that that step is still there in my mesh. And that's because all of those points on those domains are still database constrained. They're still constrained to the geometry, to that discontinuity, because it's still there, right? And the only way that I can get rid of that is if I were to coarsen my mesh, right? If I were to use something even finer than this, I would further resolve that discontinuity. I just don't have a hard grid curve at that boundary. So if I wanted to defeature it on the grid level, I could go ahead and go to um, grid and dimension and grab all of my connectors and just set a larger grid spacing. And you can see that we're approximating that step. There's a little curvature to that grid curve still, but because we've used a coarser spacing, we're now approximating that discontinuity. And that's how you can kind of glaze over those on the grid level is if you are able to use a grid spacing that's larger than that feature. Now, if you'd just like to get rid of that feature and still use a fine grid spacing, we would need to take a different approach. And I will demonstrate that. So I'll go ahead and delete my mesh and pull the geometry back up. What I would like to do is if I wanna kind of glaze over that or smooth over that, and still use a tight grid spacing, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the surface, okay? Trim this model, so I'm isolating the center portion. I'll mesh kind of the outboard sections, and then I'll come in and create like an approximate mesh over the inner geometry, all right? So to do that, I'm gonna start by creating a line on the database. We're gonna do a database line, and I'm gonna just sketch this curve. So I'm gonna pick a point there and we'll just go ahead and sketch that and apply do the same thing over here i'm going to go ahead and sketch a curve and you're going to want to really carefully consider where you draw these lines because you probably want them close enough to the feature because again you're going to be making an approximation um, you don't want them pushed out too far because then you're going to be carrying that approximate that approximation further into your geometry Right. That's kind of the same reason why we wouldn't just take this surface and then rotate it about this curve so that they, that they line up. So basically that this point then becomes coincident with this point. We wouldn't do that because we'd be changing a significant piece of our geometry. And we really want to adjust things locally, very close to that discontinuity. So I've gone ahead and created these curves and I can click OK. And now I can select the model and go Edit Trim by Curves. Just control A to select both of those curves and then imprint and you can see what we would end up with and then click OK. And now what I can do is I can just grab, you know, my, notice that my mouse is the multi cursor. By default, it's selecting the model. If I hit the space bar, it'll select the other entities that happen to be beneath my cursor. So you'll notice that if I hit the space bar, it goes back to the model, hit the space bar. And now it's a quilt. I'm just going to select that quilt. I'm going to do the same thing over here, hit the space bar, and then while holding down the control key, select that quilt as well. So I've got the two outboard quilts selected, 
and I'll go ahead and mesh those. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the database for a moment and I'm just gonna sketch some two point grid curves or connectors between these points. So I'll go up here and click on two point curves, make sure that connector is selected and then just sketch a straight curve between those two points and then grab all four of those connectors and create a domain. All right. So now that domain kind of approximates that step further into the geometry so it's not so abrupt and I'm still able to use a smaller grid spacing again without resolving that step. And if I turn the database view back on you can see that's exactly what that domain is doing. It's kind of approximating that step. And that's why I said it's really important to figure out where you want to draw those trimming curves because the closer you draw them to that step, the, the sharper that angle is going to be, the steeper that slope is going to be, um, but it's not going to be propagated too far into your geometry, the outboard sections of your geometry. All right. So this is one way to do it. The other way that you can do it, I'm going to go ahead and delete all those connectors once again. And I've already trimmed it. I'm going to go ahead and select the geometry in between those two trim locations and just hit delete. So I, I use an inclusive selection holding down the shift key and then the left mouse button I can draw and it'll only highlight the entities or select the entities that were inside that selection box and I can hit delete. So now I've basically deleted that step and the geometry adjacent to that step. So all that's left is the outboard geometry. And now I'm gonna create a surface. So I'll go back to two point curves this time I'll pick database as the entity type and I'm going to draw two database curves between the points on these outboard surfaces. I'm then going to also select the database boundaries mask and that's going to allow me to select the database boundaries of these two outboard surfaces and also the database mask which is going to allow me to pick these two curves that I just selected. And again, using inclusive selection, holding down shift key and middle mouse button, or sorry, left mouse click, um, I can just drag a box around there, perfectly enclosing all of those curves that I need, and let go, and it will select all of those curves. And I can go to create Coons patch and generate that surface. So basically what I've just done is generated a surface to fill that void. So similarly, I can actually create what's called an interpolated surface. So before, by sketching those, those curves, those database curves, I could have sketched, you know, like I did straight linear segments. I could have created something with some curvature to it that would have given that, uh, that surface a little bit of uh, curvature, some more shape. Um, but if I wanted to, I could just grab, if I select the database boundaries mask, I can just grab these database boundaries on the two opposite outboard sections of that geometry and I could go to create interpolate and just create an, an interpolated surface between those two pieces of geometry. So this is a much simpler approach. It allows you to just pick two curves and then interpolate a surface between those curves and I can go ahead and click OK to accept that. Now what I can do is I can just do a control A on all the database entities and create assemble models and just assemble that into a single model okay and now what I've done is I've effectively defeatured that geometry on the geometry level and now I have a piece of geometry that approximates that step that discontinuity and when I go ahead and mesh it you'll notice that the result is very similar to what I had on the grid level turn off the domain it would cut through that step if that step were still around. Um, but this is a little bit more permanent in that I've deleted that geometry, I've replaced it with a surface that approximates it, and then I can just mesh on it and I can reuse it over and over again. So those are the different techniques that you can use to kind of defeature or remove a discontinuity or step in your geometry.